In the 1970s, Southwest Airlines' average turn time, meaning from the time a plane arrives at the gate to the time it leaves the gate, was only 10 minutes. Today, it's more like 45 to 55 minutes. At that time, we had smaller aircraft, only 122 seats on those original 737-200s. Southwest has grown and become more popular, and we're just carrying more people on board than we did back when we first started. Regardless of which airline you're flying and where you're going, boarding isn't typically an enjoyable part of the trip. It's hot, it's time consuming, everybody's just like in a rush. Since the end of 2022, Southwest Airlines has been testing new concepts to improve its turn times. CNBC flew out to Atlanta to learn more. I just went through airport security and now I'm heading to my gate and I'm actually flying Southwest today. So I am very curious to see how long it takes us to board. Now welcoming A1 through 15 at this time, A1 through 15. Delays cost airlines and passengers about $33 billion each year. But speeding up the boarding process isn't really a priority for airlines. They've monetized everything about it. The major airlines have raised billions of dollars off of their loyalty programs, so it is very important that they keep them appealing enough for customers. The different boarding groups that we see today have emerged because people value their priority in boarding, and so airlines are using that to generate more revenue and reward their best customers. Does that slow the process down? Maybe. Boarding a plane in 2023 goes something like this. First, it's typically travelers who need more time to board, those with disabilities and small children. Then, service members, followed by first class, status members, and premium customers. As for the rest, that depends on the airline. Then some, like Southwest, give travelers the option to board in an earlier group. For a fee, of course. As you can see, everyone's getting ready to board. People are lining up. Excuse me, sir, do you mind telling me what uh, position you are? I am A8. How did you get that? I paid up for it. <laughs> it's a purely optional fee that people choose to pay if they see the value in it, right? So I think that that is a great way for airlines to make money and also keep their customer satisfaction high. All right, it's now exactly 10.15, the time that my flight is supposed to start boarding. They are still deboarding from the previous flight. Besides having to wait for the plane to be ready, if there are a lot of passengers, there's typically lines. Travelers get stopped if they're boarding in the wrong group, carrying too many bags, or if their luggage is too large. Another thing that particularly bothers me is a lot of the gate agents talk at the same time, and it's hard to tell which one is the gate that you're sitting at. Meanwhile, people don't always line up when and where they're supposed to, causing even more chaos. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and begin our boarding process with our keyboard customers. Southwest does things a bit differently than other airlines. There isn't assigned seating, so when you check in 24 hours before your flight, you're given a boarding position. Passengers line up at the gate according to those positions before walking onto the plane. Then, it's first come first served for seat selection. Southwest says its turn times are usually industry leading, and boarding takes 15 to 16 minutes. That organization of that boarding process goes a long way where you see some of the other processes out there, It's it's kind of a mad dash to the door. Of course, with my prime A16 spot, I chose the exit row. A boarding position I got because I set an alarm the day before so that I would remember to check in exactly 24 hours before. However, for some, the process can be confusing. I'm annoyed. I was in line with everyone else. You know, I didn't know there was different boarding groups. So instead of being up front, now I'm all the way in the back. Once the line is in motion, there's how fast people walk, how long it takes to get luggage into overhead compartments, and bottoms into seats. The luggage in particular is what slows it down the most. Southwest doesn't charge for the first two checked bags. When you have no carry-ons or just one carry-on, it makes that process flow a little bit more. Meanwhile, others are reducing the number of carry-on bags and charging more in other ways. No carry-ons is a new policy for JetBlue's lowest fare. Sometimes we ask ourselves, is there anything else they can charge for? They're already charging for seat assignments. They're already charging for Wi-Fi. They're charging to check a bag. As a result of his frustration with the boarding process, years ago, Jason Steffen, who's an astrophysicist, set out to prove there's a faster way to board planes. He used an optimization algorithm and created a simulation. The way that we had been boarding 
passengers onto an airplane was about as bad as you could possibly get. So he created his own. And here's how he says the methods compare, assuming we're boarding a plane with 25 rows and 150 passengers. Let's start with the techniques airlines have traditionally used, front to back and back to front. They're pretty self-explanatory and would take about 30 minutes. Next, there's Wilma, which means window, middle, aisle. That process, along with boarding randomly, would take about 20 minutes. Then there's unassigned seating, the method Southwest currently uses. According to Stefan, that would take about 18 minutes. Meanwhile, he says his technique would be the fastest at about 15 minutes. His method boards one side of the plane first, but window seats only and every other row. Then the other side, same thing. That order continues alternating sides of the plane until all window seats are filled. And then the process repeats for middle and then aisle seats. It incorporates back to front, Wilma, boarding one side of the plane first and every other row. Do you think it's realistic? Because I personally just can't imagine, you know, a crew member standing up there saying, 30 window can go, okay, 28 window can go, and really checking and making sure that we're doing, you know, every other and also only the window seats. I don't think it would be overly difficult to implement it. Southwest Airlines kind of solved that problem already. You could just line up in the right spot and then they would send you in. It would, however, mean that passengers traveling together would have to board separately. And of course, boarding airplanes is not as simple as that animation. There's plane size, airport, airline, destination, weather conditions, baggage, and so many other factors speed up or slow down the process. The truth is, these days, boarding is pretty much about who has the highest status or paid the most. At the high end, you have someone boarding first or close to first, a high price ticket that could be like $3,000. And then you have someone in basic economy, which is the lowest price, but they have to wait and watch every other passenger board the plane. Airlines have been very good about dividing up the cabin into smaller and smaller classes that you're always kind of like looking for a little bit more comfort. For Delta Airlines, after Delta One and first class customers comes Diamond Medallion members, Delta Premium Select and Comfort Plus, all in the front of the plane. Then there's Sky Priority, followed by the main cabin groups that board based on fare. Then finally, basic economy passengers board last. Delta tells us the company's process takes about 25 minutes on average. Alaska Airlines also boards first class and those with status first, but then group D consists of those seated behind the wing and group E includes passengers in front of the wing. Then the final group F is those who purchased a saver fare. While Alaska wouldn't tell us how long exactly this process takes, the airline begins boarding 40 minutes before departure. Everyone from full service airlines to budget airlines, think of Spirit and Frontier, are trying to monetize boarding. Because it is such a painful process, what they're trying to do is get customers to pay up to board a little bit earlier than some of the other passengers. But that doesn't exactly lead to more efficient boarding. For Southwest, customers can pay up by purchasing a business select fare, early bird check-in, or upgraded boarding. In 2022, Southwest passenger ancillary sold separately revenue, which includes revenue from early bird check-in, upgraded boarding, and in-flight purchases, was $735 million, more than 3% higher than pre-pandemic numbers. Southwest wouldn't share how much of that revenue is specific to early bird check-in and upgraded boarding. However, on a July 2023 earnings call, Southwest Chief Commercial Officer Ryan Green said the company generates hundreds of millions of dollars annually from boarding products. Customers value their boarding priority. That that's why airlines are doing groups where they're boarding, you know, their most elite customers and their first class customers earlier. While airlines might never be at the point where they will turn down someone paying more money to board first, that doesn't mean other ways to speed up the process are out of the question. Our innovation team and our uh, airport and our in-flight teams have been prototyping new solutions to help speed up the turn, improve communication, and empower our employees to provide the service that we want to give to our customers. Take these pillars, for example. Most Southwest gates have metal pillars that show you where to line up when your boarding group is called. But as groups get called and people start moving, it can be difficult to tell when it's your turn. Remember, that's a problem I had on my way to Atlanta. And it's a loud environment in an airport, lots of overhead announcements. So we brought in new displays and ways to visually describe to customers what's next. These screens change too, so that even if you're several gates away grabbing a snack, you can just look down the line and see what color the screen is at your gate. Blue indicates to customers that everything's on time, no need to rush. Yellow, that indicates to customers that boarding's beginning. 
a lot of times when we come into the airport, we have our earphones on, we have other things going on. And so just having those visual cue, it gives you an idea when it's your turn to board. You don't necessarily have to be listening to everything that's going on in the airport. Lack of communication or the time it takes to communicate are other factors that can slow the process down. So Southwest is using these iPads to ideally nip those obstacles in the bud. And so when the team down on the aircraft is ready to board, I can notify them and send a notification to the crew. If they did not have the innovation testing going on, they would have to physically go down the jet bridge to speak to the in-flight crew. And my favorite part, music in the jet bridge. There are studies out there that show music at certain beats per minute help increase the pace of people uh, walking. So disco, EDM, it gets people going? Any music helps that ambiance as long as it has hits those beats per minute targets. Our boarding, and especially in our C group boarding, is up 18% in terms of how fast we're able to get customers through and onto the aircraft. The goal is to chop two minutes off of the company's turn time. And based on the data thus far, Southwest is confident that will happen. Having extra minutes at our scale with coming up on like 800 aircraft, the math adds up really quickly. A plane that's sitting around waiting for passengers to board isn't making any money. In fact, delayed planes are estimated to cost about $33 billion each year. Delays tend to cascade. Let's say a plane that gets off the gate late from Newark, it arrives late in Denver, that plane has to go somewhere else. Like my flight to Atlanta, that if you remember, started boarding about 10 minutes late because passengers were still getting off of the plane from the previous flight. It's now 11 a.m. The flight was supposed to take off at 10.45, and we are still on the ground. We ended up taking off about 30 minutes late. It could also mean that some of those passengers are misconnecting. That's another cost for airlines to reaccommodate those customers. But if it's a chronic problem where planes are leaving late all the time, that could kind of ripple out to the, the entire network. Southwest is analyzing the results of its latest study, and you might see one of these improvements the next time you're in the airport. After checking out Southwest prototypes in Atlanta, it was finally time to head back to New York. Especially after my original flight was canceled and my new flight was delayed, I for one am certainly hoping I start to see a faster boarding method. I'm hot, I'm sweaty. <laughs> it's taken a long time. The more that we're able to get aircraft turned on time and in, when it's on the ground allows us to fly more reliably for our customers as well as it allows us to fly our aircraft more times in a day uh, to help keep our costs low and that Southwest efficiency that's kind of been a cornerstone for us.